Hello and welcome to Cyber Focus, your source for international business information. I'm your host, Tim Smith, and my guests today are Professor Timothy Helwig and Andrea Adam Moore. Both are fellow Indiana University colleagues and directors at IU's Europe Gateway Office in Berlin, Germany. Professor Helwig serves as Professor of Political Science at Indiana University and Acting Academic Director at IU's Europe Gateway Office. Tim has been a researcher at the International Foundation for Election Systems, on the faculty at the University of Houston, and a visiting researcher at the Australian National University, Jotaberg University, and the University of Essex. He also previously served as director of the Institute for European Studies at Indiana University's Hamilton Luger School of Global and International Studies. His interests are in comparative political economy, political behavior, European politics, public policy, and research methods. He is author of Globalization and Mass Politics, Retaining the Room to Maneuver by Cambridge University Press. And his work appears in several journals and book chapters, including the American Journal of Political Science, the British Journal of Political Science, and the Journal of Politics. Andrea Adam Moore has served as director of the IU Europe Gateway Office since it was opened in December of 2015. Previously, she was the director of the German University Alliance, a nonprofit consortium of Freie Universität Berlin and Ludwig Maximilians Universität München. In addition, Andrea managed a 300 member international student exchange program at Humboldt University to Berlin's School of Business and Economics. Today, we will be discussing and learning about the IU Europe Gateway Office and its important role in one of the world's largest and most celebrated economies. The IU Europe Gateway is one of IU's five global gateway network offices. The gateway offices in China, India, Mexico, Southeast Asia, and Europe serve as significant portals that link IU students, faculty, and staff to opportunities around the world and that connect internationally based students, alumni, and partners to IU. Hello, Andrea and Tim. Thank you so much for joining me today. Good to be here. <laughs> Hello, thank you for having us. Absolutely. Well, let's jump into it. So uh, I think an obvious first question is, please share a brief history of IU's Europe Gateway with us and help us understand the office's mission, partnerships, and role in the region. Sure. So thanks again for, for having us, for letting us talk a little bit about what we have been doing and want to do in the future here. So the Europe Gateway in Berlin um, was um, opened in, in late 2015 as the third IU Global Gateway. And um, I, I always um, say that it was kind of a, a really strategic decision to, to locate this gateway in Berlin and not elsewhere in Europe. You know, other American universities have their um, spaces in Paris or London, et cetera. But uh, I think this decision was made based on several things, among which are certainly very, very strong ties to some German universities. So I want to point out um, very long-standing um, partnership with the university in Hamburg, which is two hours on the train away. Um, and then specifically also the Freie Universität in Berlin, where former IU president Wells actually had his hands in the founding of the university. And mm -hmm. we, we like to... Uh, remember that. So Berlin was kind of a, um, a, a good choice for that reason, but also as it is a place that's um, very accessible, it's also very attractive. A lot of people re are really intrigued by the city, by the history, by a lot of things, and you know, not least of it also that uh, it's, it's fairly affordable as a major city in, uh, in Europe. And um, the third reason I would say for having this gateway in Berlin is certainly that it is, Berlin is kind of a gateway to Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. It is part of what we consider Western Europe, but it's very close to Poland. And um, as you both know, um, IU has a very um, um, strong um, 
focus on um, Eastern European studies, the Russian studies are very strong. Um, so a lot of faculty work with partners in that region too, and we are fairly close to that. And it has been proven um, to work very well. So we've been working for four and a half years here. Um, we, um, our mission is um, to, to, to say very, very briefly is to support the IU community and that is faculty, staff, students, alumni, to so support them in their engagement in our region. And what does it mean? Um, we are um, uh, in Europe, in the Europe Gateway, and it's a little bit different for all the gateways for each individual gateway. But in the Europe Gateway, we are actually um, hosting, um, usually hosting many academic events. Um, so we invite IU faculty to come to us in Berlin, in the middle of Berlin, and uh, meet with their European or other international colleagues for symposia, conferences, etc. We are um, helping to organize um, faculty-led study abroad. We're working on deepening the partnerships with European universities. Um, we're deeply engaging with the alumni in the region. Um, so that's kind of the, the four main parts of our work. And then of course, um, we, we try to help with any other sort of um, engagement wish that um, is brought upon us. Great, Andrea, thank you. Yeah, just to tag on to that a little bit, I think Andrea's right at the end where she, we try to be uh, responsive, we try to be nimble, we try to be creative, we try to help faculty and students in the way that they see fit. And we really see this as a collaborative exercise rather than uh, the international office and, and the gateways trying to, uh, uh, you know, di dictate or, or, or suggest how we do things really. Um, but, uh, but, you know, but I do think there are some really fascinating you know, things that are, are, are location sort of at the heart of, of Europe broadly construed provides, you know, um, uh, and, you know, for me uh, as a scholar, I'm very excited about the ways that we can bring in different practitioners that, and scholars across the region of Europe mm -hmm. that want to study a common problem. We've had examples of scholars from education uh, do this in terms of STEM education from our policy school, looking at urban development, bringing on researchers in different countries, different regions in Germany. I've been interested in trying to bring together different researchers from different European countries, Sweden, Denmark, uh, Italy, uh, France, into Germany to study how governments survive in uncertain times. Uh, and of course that might have some uh, implications for the current um, mm -hmm. environment we're all living in. So I think we're really, it's really a fascinating resource to bring researchers not just from Germany but other countries that might be engaged in a common problem uh, and address it that way and I really see that along with integrating research into some study abroad opportunities as a real added benefit for the gateways in general and especially this one we have in Berlin. Excellent, thank you Tim. Uh, I've been saying lately quite often that good things happen when people come together. And, exactly. and the coming together is an important point. I mean, most of all, we are, I think, behind all this is um, the, the goal to extend IU's network in mm. Europe. Um, that is personal, institutional linkages, business connections, all of those are being built continuously over the past um, years. And they are there to be, to be taken advantage of by, you know, any member of the IU community. Mm. Great, thanks. So how are you navigating through this COVID-19 pandemic? Well, it's, it's, it's been an adjustment, that's for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I think, um, you know, as we all had to very quickly make huge adjustments from guests moving out of our very nice office space into my, well, still very nice home space. <laughs> but, um, you know, working from home is the individual adjustment with all the challenges that come with that. Um, but uh, for us um, as the Europe Gateway, I think this has been a, a very big change because um, what this, this spring and summer was supposed to be an extremely busy and active um, uh, time at the Gateway. We had, I think, something like 15 events or so in the making for wow. the time between March and July. And 
We had like several, I think five study abroad programs that were supposed to come to Berlin. It's several events, um, you know, academic workshops, conferences. We had bicentennial um, celebrations planned and all that is was canceled within days. Um, so um, this was, a, of course, a huge shock. Um, totally the right decision, but um, we had to we had to go with this. So, um, so then, of course, the question is, how, what, what are we doing now? And um, we've, um, after canceling all these things, in, in some cases, planning for possible future um, postpone, uh, postponing dates, um, we've, we've looked into how can we still help IU um, engage with European partners. And um, I'm very, very happy that one of these study abroad programs that was supposed to come to Germany, um, it's actually moving online. So they are doing this program. It's between the Universität um, Augsburg in southern Germany and the O'Neill School. And they are moving their program virtual. Mm-hmm. And um, I would have been part of that program. I'm, I'm to, a, to quite a good number of our study abroad courses coming to Germany. I'm giving a somewhat like a um, cultural introduction session. Mm-hmm. And um, now I'm doing that virtually with them. Looking forward to that. It's the first time. Um, it will be a little bit different because we don't have the in the classroom inter, uh, you know, the connection. But um, who am I saying that to? I mean, as faculty, you are making that change too. But at least that program is, um, is still, uh, will still be happening. And it's actually, because it's now virtual, it's actually offering spaces to students who couldn't have gone mm. on the actual program on site. So I mean, as you know, a lot of students are concerned about getting their credits from the, that they were supposed to get abroad um, so this might hopefully help a few students who had to you know can't go on other programs this summer so that's one way of still working with on what we were supposed to be working on and then we are out, we, we're doing other um, you know virtual things so one of the the positive things of this situation is that I feel like I see my colleagues in the other gateways Mm. much more often than I used to. So we have big weekly meetings and we do a lot of brainstorming on what we can do with the challenges, what what new ways of working with IU um, we can develop. So we are we're definitely trying to, um, all of the gateways are uh, going to try to help faculty if they wish in the future to connect to classrooms in the gateway regions virtually, we will make those connections, help them um, create them and uh, schedule um, innovative and fun ways to have students interact virtually. Um, we are also working on a webinar series with the other gateways right now. Um, we're actually thinking about um, and we're going, we're, we're, we're getting um, further and for, further with it. Um, webinar series on the arts uh, in the time of a pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's hopefully going to be interesting and fun. It will involve IU faculty, but then also ex- experts and artists from the Gateway region. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And the third piece that, that what we are working on right now is that we are trying to engage with our partner institution um, that uh, usually the, a lot of the engagement of the partner institutions is on uh, uh, student exchange and mm-hmm. you know, which student goes where, what. Um, and we have a, a few partners that uh, where the relationship is a bit more strategic, thoughtful, deeper, where we are trying to think about new modes of working together. And we are setting up uh, meetings with them to, to see how our relationship can grow in this time mm-hmm. and maybe how we can help each other. So these are these are things that we are doing right now. Um, it's short term, long term, we'll see. <laughs> well, I wish you success with all of them, Andrea. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, I mean, a real question for me is, you know, are, are these changes how, what are, what's the time horizon for these changes, right? Are we <laughs> yes. in a temporary period where we're just adjusting for a semester and then we will go back? Or, or is this a new, a new normal or is this a new, a new way of thinking about international engagement? I mean, the positive benefit is just as U.S. universities are talking to each other, administrators are trying to learn from each other, states are trying to learn from each other, so too are 
you know, international offices and this whole international education system is trying to learn from each other and, and we're, we're right there as well. Um, I think, you know, just to add one more piece to this, um, so my job as academic director based here in Indiana is to kind of uh, share with people and tell people about the gateway and the gateway system and, and engage our faculty, students, and alumni in it. And I was thinking about this. I think it kind of means my message is that we don't want to say, oh, we're shutting down, right? We want, I want to tell people we're thinking about new ways to use the gateways. Mm -hmm. We're thinking about connections. And the silver lining might, and this might mean things like doing smaller, shorter term video things, cultural connections, rather than longer two weeks, you know, intensive research and study abroad programs. But on the upside, this might make it more accessible as well, mm. right? That some of the things we do, uh, it might make it more appealing to some of our regional campuses across the state, which is also part of our mission. We don't just serve Bloomington, mm. or we don't just serve Indianapolis, we serve the entire um, IU system. And so, and then I just would say, and this, this reflects, I think, no matter if you're talking to business, people in the business school or people in, uh, in political science, my field, or in the arts, I think a lot of us researchers are really wondering, what should we do? Mm. Um, just, I don't want to get a off the topic, but when the financial crisis hit in 2008, I changed my research program quite a bit. I said, this is important. I need to work on this. Um, and then for the next five years, or well, whatever, not that, yeah, yeah, I was doing that, and I hadn't planned to do that, right? Well, are we going to do this? Should we do be doing the same thing with with with, with the the COVID nineteen? Nobody can doubt that it's not important, um, mm -hmm. but it'll be interesting. I think we as as the gateways should think about how we can facilitate research in these new directions for public health, um, business, you know, social science or whatnot. So. Um, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that we can, we can adapt and, and, and be quite relevant in this new environment. That's great, can Tim. I, Thank you. Can I just add to, I, th I think Tim, Please. Said the, the um, internationalization at home, as it's called, because study abroad is not accessible to all students, mm. uh, will never be, but internationalization at home is, is has become for years now um, a, a very important thing. So, what does it mean? How can we how can we get a global perspective into our, you know, maybe South Bend um, classroom? Um, and that that it is important. And uh, OVPA has been working. The Office of the Vice President of International Affairs has been working on this before. But I think it might be accelerated now because um, suddenly studying abroad, traveling abroad will at least for some time not be possible for almost anyone. So um, we have this or OVPA has created this um, global classroom program um, where faculty can really build a sustainable collaboration with a classroom somewhere else. Um, uh, on the planet and the gateways are playing a role in this. We are trying to um, connect with our closest partners and because we think that these relationships, these strong ties will maybe be a, a good place to look for such partner classrooms. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be, but they could be. So I think this, um, th this whole thinking about how can we bring these global per perspectives on lots of different things home um it's it's, it's some, suddenly much more important so and i'm and i'm absolutely convinced that we can help bring these perspectives to indiana excellent thank you thank you both so as you mentioned andrea you'll be celebrating five years of existence in december again congratulations so what would you share with us as some of the important impact points to date for the Gateway Office, both locally and throughout Europe? So I would I would say, um, I mean, the impact for me, um, it, it, it goes along with the goals that we have set for the Gateway Network. And I think where we have seen um, accomplishments, um, successes is certainly in the in the number of students that have come to Europe in the past uh, five years or the increase of number of students. So there are um, 
for you know for, for several programs um, the gateway was um, crucial to creating study abroad opportunities for students um, we've helped students find internships in Europe um, um, helped you know any kind of um, um, yeah uh, coming to to the region um, uh, on the student side so that's um, certainly one one of the um, the, the obvious uh, successes that we've we've seen um, we've I think what another point that's been very good to see is that we really um, were able together with of course our colleagues in the office in uh, of the vice president um, we've really been able to um, deepen certain um, institutional partnerships or and create new ones so mm -hmm. we have um, uh, like a very promising um, university level partnership with the university in Hamburg. It's been a partner, like Hamburg has been a partner for over 40 years now, but we are really getting this partnership to a new level right now. We are um, looking into so many different ways of funding faculty initiatives, study mm. initiatives. We're looking at like, uh, we, we have, we feel we have a similar vision in terms of internationalization. So, um, and that's been, um, not just um, uh, due to our work, also to others, but I, I feel like we've been we've, we've been uh, a major part of that. And another relationship to mention is, of course, with the Sorbonne University, that is uh, an extremely promising um, um, connection for for the entire university. And then, um, uh, last but absolutely not least. Um, I think our impact is um, sometimes is really the impact of the faculty's research that mm. we've been able to support, and and maybe that's something that Tim um, can speak to uh, more um, uh, deeply. But I, I really think that I, I've seen over the past almost five years so many faculty coming with their research meeting at the gateway, and then um, this flowers into these great um, collaborations, publications, et cetera. And, and so I, in that case, I think it's not really our impact, but um, a joint impact and more directly the impact of the researcher, but we've also been part of that. Great, thank you. Yeah, yeah, to piggyback on that last point, I mean, I think, I think that's right. We've been recently, you know, looking at at the fruits of these meetings that we've been doing. And we've been impressed, you know, uh, talking back with IE researchers, you know, what's came out of it. And I've been actually pleasantly surprised with all the sort of outputs, grant proposals, partnerships made at the researcher level, right? Uh, on different air problems, right? With European and, and IE based researchers that have come out. You know, it's hard to say whether or not this would happen without the gateway. I don't think it would have because a lot of times we make the connections possible, we facilitate them, we make them uh, financially feasible. Uh, we have this, we had this program run through the um, research office through these presidential international research awards that have provided some financing for this, also these global gateway grants. So for example, we've had faculty uh, from social work come over and Carmen Luca Sugawawa, who's a social work uh, faculty in, in Indianapolis, uh, her story is, is, is interesting because she's actually done work on the role of higher education in the Balkans and in Southeastern Europe in, in, in development of, of uh, uh, building local capacity for economic development. So how does education partner with uh, civil society and entrepreneurs in these countries, in post-communist countries where they might not have a, the same culture or, or history of bottom-up kind of economic development, and how can, how can education not get out of its ivory towers and sort of help those efforts? And so she's doing field work in Croatia, for example, and partnering and pairing with doing some uh, uh, presentation and some meetings at the Gateway in Berlin. And that's a really great example about how the gateway makes that happen and also does original research and then, and then publicizes it and, and, and in that way. We've got other faculty in geography uh, and in Jewish studies do research on refugees and attitudes of refugees. One of the biggest problems in Europe, of course, since 2015 has been the refugee crisis uh, and how different countries have adopted that. And, and we're just scratching the surface and understanding the multi-layers of that. 
And again, IU researchers are pairing field work, interviews, um, original data collection with um, doing symposia and, and sharing of initial findings at the gateway. So I think that's a fantastic way in which we are increasing the research profile of Indiana University through these gateways. Thank you, Tim, and thank you for giving the specific examples. Uh, I'm always excited and encouraged to hear about theory being put into practice. And I think the, the, the relevancy of the activity then is validated and it goes somewhere and benefits individuals. Uh, I, uh, thanks for sharing that. So what do you anticipate as points of distinction for the Gateway Office over the coming months? And uh, Andrea, thank you for mentioning a few projects, certainly. And uh, how might Indiana University's Europe Gateway Office further advance its academic and professional interests through increased collaboration in one of the most, well, one of the world's most celebrated and largest economies? Yeah, Andrea, do you want to answer that? Sure. Or? Sure. Um, so um, Tim and I have talked about this um, before, um, and obviously we've been thinking about this um, earlier before the beginning of this crisis. But um, I think what what the last few weeks have shown all of us, and in different places we saw different challenges. Um, so we've been like here in Germany, as you might you probably both already know, um, our healthcare system so far seems to doing fairly well with this situation and it's been certainly um, a relief to you know to see this to live in a place where this is the situation I I feel really badly for all my friends uh, I lived in New York City for 10 years um, where the, the system is obviously very overwhelmed so mm -hmm. they, it, it, I think it, it gives a, a, a great sense of relief to be in a place where that's not the case so that's a, that's a that's a situation that's good here, or decent. Mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, on the other hand, I've I've been seeing um, things that really show us um, the challenges that this country is facing. You know, you say yes, a very strong economy. I think it has not been a secret that the uh, in terms of digitalization, Germany is not on the forefront um, and maybe so far this could be, you know, I don't know, it, it shouldn't have been um, um, neglected, but it, it maybe it wasn't as important. Um, but right now we feel it in so many different ways. And one very obvious one to us in higher education, but also us with children is, um, you know, the challenge of homeschooling and mm. um, educating children um, online and um, I, I talked to a teacher friend of mine the other day and she said it's this is going to change German schools we need to change this is we're so behind this is, this is all analog people are printing out worksheets it's um, so we're really behind on this and this crisis is showing it's putting us it in our, in our face and and I think this is something where and you know it's, it's probably a different level for the universities here um, I, I'm, I, I know that they are more advanced than elementary schools, yes, but, um, but I do see that there's great potential for um, Indiana University, who I do think is um, very advanced in this compared to a lot of other institutions, to share experience and expertise. Um, and uh, I would say this is an example of where we can help make connections and um, promote that strength and hopefully find open ears. Mm. Sounds great. I hope so as well. Mm. Tim, did you want to add anything? Absolutely. Um, let, that's a really good point. Uh, I think um, so often, you know, we in the, here in Indiana in generally or in the United States generally say, look at Germany and we think that well, they've got it all figured out. We're getting this great new, we're getting very positive news about the response to the pandemic in Germany. Mm. And uh, sometimes some of the problems or areas which could be improved are not necessarily front and center for us. Uh, and what I, what I think about, you know, I think there's a lot that IU researchers in, in business industry, technology, these kinds of areas can bring to the table um, We've been talking to them at Bloomington campus with SICE and at Indian uh, UPUI and engineering and, and whatnot. 
we've been talking to them and, and also in the business school and, and with uh, cyber, the, the Y, the ER. Um, we've been talking with, uh, with them about ways that we can make connections and work with German partners to address some of these problems. The one Andrea just mentioned is this kind of front and center, but there might be others too in technology, uh, 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 resource management, things like that for Germany. German, German scholars and, 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 and Bloomington and Indiana scholars can, can come together. And I think that's really an exciting way to think about leveraging our, our footprint in, in Berlin and in Germany. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, please. I think once we are able to move a bit more freely again, I, I would certainly hope that um, the Europe Gateway will be a place where IU faculty can bring together European counterparts to learn from each other, discuss in that community, you know, what this pandemic, what this crisis has changed, um, how it was managed. I mean, I think it will be certainly, if it's IU -ish initiated, it makes certainly sense to come to a place in Europe to gather all these people rather than flying them all to Indiana. So Absolutely. Um, I would hope that this can be something that maybe in 2021, um, maybe not only one faculty, but, but several in different areas um, could make use of our connections and then also our facilities to, to meet here and see, you know, I mean, what is the European? Was there an European approach? What, in what ways was it European and in what ways was it national? And how did the different national um, strategies work or not? Um, I think that could be a, a great opportunity coming out of mm. this. I would agree. That sounds to be an excellent opportunity for all of us. Uh, let's work to facilitate it, right? That'd be great. Well, I, I want to wrap up our time together with uh, an important question. Uh, Indiana University is, is, is celebrating its bicentennial, 200 years. Congratulations, IU. <laughs> and international engagement is a big part of what has made IU what it is today. How do you two see the future of global engagement taking shape at IU and how will that be reflected through the gateways? What will stay the same and what will change? Yeah, I mean, maybe I can say just a couple of big picture. Uh, uh, that's a really good question. Um, uh, just to, to, I think, you know, being here in Bloomington, I've been here for 10 years or so. And one thing that's really struck with me at IU and what I've learned about IU is that uh, we, not, we, we, we have a real strength in international engagement. It goes back decades, even a century. Uh, and a lot of that is really connected to an emphasis on deep linguistic, cultural, local context, mm -hmm. historical knowledge about how different parts of the world work, right? And I think that is unique to IU and IU's sort of international engagement, you know, local knowledge paired with IU with expertise uh, about problems. I think that's going to stay the same. I think what's going to change sort of big picture and this crisis is, is going to keep pushing it in that direction is to think about problems in glo global perspective and how they have different applications and cross regional connections. So, you know, for example, in responding to public health crisis, it may be the fact that uh, in some countries, maybe in Eastern Europe or whatnot, um, it's more of a logistical problem in getting patients to see the doctors, whereas in other places in the United States, the, the, or in Germany, not so much, but maybe in the United States or elsewhere, it's been assessing whether there is a problem in testing patients. Mm -hmm. And so here's a similar problem, but has different realizations in different contexts. I think IE researchers I think IU is going to go in that direction, I think. I, I see through projects like the Grand Challenges, like um, emerging areas of research, areas that IU is put, generally is putting some of its resources in as a way of marrying this historical sort of regional base, historical emphasis with common global problems moving forward. At least, you know, I, I, I hope and I feel pretty confident in that and optimistic that that will be a new sort of way of moving forward. Uh, in terms of how, what we think about when we think about IU and international uh, uh, research and uh, output. 
But Andrea, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. I think I, I mean I, I think I mentioned a few things already in the uh, earlier parts of the conversation. I think the you know the thinking about internationalization that does not include travel, um, though that certainly will limit our um, our not it will not limit our work, but the 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 um, for, for example the the academic events that we can we can host. But I, I think it's also the, the opportunities that we can create virtually that will probably change in the future. And I, what I do think will happen is that, you know, if once this is over and whatever over means, um, there, I think there will be at least for, for all the generations that are adult uh, right now, this, this will be a warning and we will be aware this could, could happen again very quickly. Mm. And we all learn about this, well, dark side of globalization as it is, and um, that we, we need to be better prepared uh, in many, many ways for another one. And um, also in our sector, also in higher education, and especially, not especially, but also in international higher education. Mm -hmm. and so I think we, there will be, there will be a, a process over the next months um, where we will think about how we can be better prepared for this. And, what ways to work to still work in case there is another such situation mm. yes thank you both it, it makes me think of uh hannah buxbaum's recent video post to our partners around the globe stating that our relationships are indestructible i thought that was a great word for her to use and i think it's spot on because from these strong relationships that we have built and we're building and we will build, good things will continue to happen and there'll be much learning and hopefully must much application of the learning as well. I wanna thank you both so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I wish you well and I wish all of you and your families good health. Same to you. Thanks very much, Jim. Likewise, hope we can come back and do this in a couple of years and, and we can have a see what's see what's happened that would be perfect let's do it that's all the time we have for this edition of cyber focus thank you for tuning in if you have any comments or suggestions for future topics please let us know at cyber that's c-i-b-e-r at indiana.edu